I'm not afraid to get better. That's what I'm, that's what I'm here for to work and get better, uh, make the team better, make the organization better. So it's all a part of the plan. After skipping a full year of football, people were skeptical about Jamar Chase's return to the game. Well, it appears the rookie wide receiver from Louisiana came into the NFL all guns blazing and isn't willing to take any prisoners. For the third time in the three games he has played for his team, Jamar has scored a TD of 30 yards minimum. Now that's a record. And for someone that's known for a serial record setter from LSU, it's no surprise really. As for all the preseason worries regarding him and his drops, everyone can say goodbye to them because this man is simply on fire. In their season opener against the Minnesota Vikings, he got a chance to see the beauty of the partnership he has formed with Joe Burrow over the years. Burrow sent the superstar receiver for a 50-yard bomb, which had them leading 14-7 as they went into the half. The play is one beauty you have to see to appreciate. With all we've seen so far of the youngster, it would make sense for you to want to know the truth about Jamar Chase and the NFL Draft. Therefore, We'll be discussing that in today's video. Make sure to leave a like on this video if you're a fan of Jamar Chase. And if you would like to join this month's giveaway of a brand new iPhone 13, then all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and watch this video until the end to find and comment the hidden message. Good luck. Our superstar receiver won the highly coveted Bolitnikoff Award given to America's best wide receiver. This is amazing, but what was even more fantastical was why he won it. With the ridiculous record spanning 84 receptions, 1,780 yards, plus 20 TDs, he was the obvious choice for the recognition. Then he chose not to play in his junior season, which meant not being active for a whole season, and that drew reasonable concerns. After getting drafted to the Bengals team, he also drew concerns in training as well as the preseason. Why? Allegedly, he was dropping balls from passes an awful lot. The skeptics started thinking that maybe, just maybe, he would be a bust. Well, all it took was for the season to start proper. And after that happened, quite frankly, all those overreactions are laughable right now. One might even conclude that he is having fun with no pressure whatsoever especially with the terrific Joe Burrow delivering the passes. And the Bengals fans are having the blast with the combination of their star wide receiver and their star quarterback. Three games into the season, and Jamar Chase is already the only man with the 30-yard receiving TD in each of his first three career games in the Super Bowl era. Even if you decide to disregard the standard statistics, the receiver is still very remarkable. With three games in, the pro football focus already recognizes him as one of the best deep threats in the league. Chase is placed third in the league with 126 for deep yards on passes of at least 20 yards, earning him a 97.3 grade. The PFF also grades him fifth best against man coverage with a 90.3 rating and 10th best for depth of routes. Now it might appear as if we're overhyping him too early, but the only reason why that seems to be the case is because of the talks about him before the start of the season. Team fans and pundits were talking about the youngster being rusty and that he was struggling during the preseason. This talk persisted throughout the training camps, offseason and preseason games. It appeared the fifth overall draft pick was truly rusty, struggling with repeated drops. The issue was brought up in his first news conference. Chase replied to it, saying the drops resulted from a lack of focus. The receiver also admitted that his first preseason wasn't as beneficial as he had hoped. As reported by ESPN Stats and Information, back in 2019 at LSU, Jamar dropped about 4.8% of the targets. That happened to be less than average for Power 5 receivers. That was the same year that he headed the group for both TDs and receiving yards. That was also the Bolitnikoff Award year. So should we say that's his system? Not really. The change has not been as clean as Chase would have wanted since coming to Cincinnati. In the preseason, the youngster was not able to catch four of his five targets. 
Stunningly, the four targets included his homie Joe Burrow's only pass since returning from knee injury. When asked on it, he revealed that he had jumped in the air before the ball came, so his eyes weren't focused on the ball. Eventually, the talks got to coach Zach Taylor, but he wisely remained unbothered by it. The coach, who was in the third year of his contract, reiterated his confidence in Chase. The coach said that he had seen the manner of Chase's preparation during practice and was not concerned at all. The man went further by disclosing that he has high expectations of him. At this point, one can very well make the argument that perhaps the coach saw something that we all didn't see. Even Chase. I mean, this guy went on with excuses for the drops and even blamed the bigger ball, saying he needed to adjust to it. Either way, anyone who knows Chase knows he is a fighter. So he went back to training, spending most of the offseason working on the issues. The man even had to train to catch 40 tennis balls every day to ensure he got his hand-eye coordination correct. So with high confidence from the coach, teammates, and himself, he went into his first game making history. In his first ever NFL match, Chase became the first Bengal player in history to put on the number one jersey in a regular season match. And how long did it take him to do another one? Just three games later. In the Sunday match against the Steelers, the star receiver hauled in two more TD passes that came from the star quarterback, Joe Burrow. This gave the Bengals their second win of the season with a 24-10 victory over the Steelers. Remember, that was the team that managed only four wins throughout last season. Well, a lot has changed, obviously. But once again, I think it's only fair to come back to the matter of the Burrow-Chase combination because it's one very lethal combo that dates back to their LSU days. Their college opponents were testament to its effectiveness after the school won the 2019 College National Championship. The exploits of Chase are the thing that got him drafted with the number one five overall pick earlier this year. Even now, some fans wonder if that was what the team management had in mind when they opted for Burrow's favorite receiver over a top tier offensive tackle like Penny Sewell. The truth is, while a player like Sewell can offer help and protection, Burrow pulling the trigger to chase offers an explosive offense that's too hard to resist. I mean, this is a partnership that has connected 11 passes and 220 yards with four TDs already this season. Now, if such a blistering pace continues to the end of the season, Jamar's stats for the year will read something like 1,246 yards for 22 touchdowns. And that would be one heck of a rookie season for anyone. With that being said, we end today's video. So, what are your thoughts on Jamar Chase this season? Do you think he can carry on with this form till the end of the season? Or do you think he can even improve on it? Just how far can the partnership between him and Burrow take the Bengal team? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Also, don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you are new here and hit that notification bell to ensure you don't miss our next video and other videos. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep safe.